First up is Maddie Beers, the most recent Pro Stock winner. Man, you got that monkey off your back. Must must have been feeling pretty good the last couple of weeks. Oh man, yeah, it uh, played out good. I, you know, did a lot of work to the car that week and uh, found a couple little things that it seemed to like. And now coming into this weekend, we're trying to, you know, keep it going, not change too much from where we were. And so far, so good, I guess. So you've done uh, some Super Street 100 lappers, but I don't think you've ever done 150, have you? I've done 150 lapper. We ran the pass race out to White Mountain back Father's Day weekend. Uh, I think we finished 13th in that. Uh, fun track, it's a lot smaller in this place. Uh, about the same group of people, a lot of good, good racers. So you got your, uh, your feet wet in long distance pro stock races that week, but... Uh, I think you got higher hopes at your home track, don't you? Yeah, it's definitely nice having a long one here at home. Uh, been focusing all year right here. And it seems to be paying off. We've gained a lot of speed this season uh, for being a rookie in the season. So you can't complain. We're going to hopefully have a good car for him here today and make it all 150 laps. So how's she feeling so far? Pretty good. We went out, scuffed first practice, fifth on the chart. Uh, second practice, we were on some practice tires. We're like 13th. And... Uh, Went back out, I think we were eighth when I come off the track right there. So I think we've got just over 40 cars to be in the top 10. I'm not, I'm not going to complain. All right. Matty Beers, one of the hometown favorites. Good luck today. Thanks, buddy. I know you're probably sick of uh, hearing me talk about this stuff, but you've been robbed of this race a couple times. How you feeling going into today? Uh, hopefully we get a good draw, you know, that's our plan, and go from there. It feels like we have a pretty decent car today, so, you know, hopefully luck's on our side today and be smooth sailing. How's it feeling in practice? Pretty competitive? Yeah, I mean, the car feels comfortable, so. You know, hopefully we uh, tire size up well and get a good draw and, you know, make they'll make our day fairly easy, if, you know, all about that draw, you know, with a, as many cars here today and uh, so those things. I see you got Joey Dwyron on the crew. He just came off his second place run at Oxford. So uh, is he calling some shots today? Oh, absolutely. You know, thankfully he's here helping us today. And, you know, step in the right direction and see what happens. You guys good friends? Yeah, great friends, yeah. All right, awesome. Uh, Garrett, good luck today racing for Norm's used cars, right? That's it. We're gonna put it up front today and we'll, we'll uh, hope for the best. St. Clair, I could be wrong, but you haven't run this car as a pro stock yet this year, right? I ran it once about two weeks ago. The car was had some decent speed, but got a tangle in the first first lap, actually. So, so that was kind of your tune-up to get ready for this race, and uh, well, it wasn't a good night for you. No, nah, it kind of gave us somewhat of what we wanted to know, a little intel, but would have really liked to run the race to have done in 50 laps instead of just two. But <laughs> now I know you've been on a limited schedule this year. What, you guys uh, still got a new kid on the way, or has they have they come out yet? No, I had a little baby boy on the 22nd. Uh, crew, Crew is his name, so. Crew. All right, congratulations, Ryan. How many St. Clairs we got in the big show today? Uh, I think there's four of us in, this, in, the, in the race today. Four of our cars, anyway. Joey Doyle is driving one for my grandfather, so it should be quite a show. And then, is Boss in the race? I believe he is. His car is out. We haven't heard a definitive yes or no yet, but I'm pretty sure he's going to be in it. All right, and uh, nonetheless, no matter where he finishes, he's probably gonna give us some donuts, right? Oh, I'm sure he'll melt her down. It's what he does every time. <laughs> he loves it. Ryan St. Clair, good luck today. Thank you.
Junkyard that. Joey Doyon. We are glad to have you out there in uh, one of Boss Hogs ride. How, how did uh, this situation come about? Uh, last Friday night there, uh, oh, actually he's down to Oxford on Sunday, he asked for my number, my new number, and uh, he said, oh, I might have a job for you next Sunday, and told him I have suit, will travel. Yeah, yeah, bring helmet, bring suit, and uh, you'll hop right in, right? Oh, yeah, I'll race anything. I don't care. Did, did you race something last night, or was it last week here? Uh, last night I raced that a little bit, so. Uh, oh, yeah, in the late model race? Yeah, we had a flat tire, and then, uh. Prior to that, it was just the Coastal 200, so. Yeah, well, that was for a different ride, though. This is your first time this year for Boss? Yes, first time for Boss. Uh, it's been, uh, I don't know, two or three years since I drove one of his hot rods. Um, did it up to Speedway 95, so it's really cool to be team backed up with him. We have a lot of fun together, and uh, we'll, we'll see what happens. Hopefully, I can drive smart in heat race and get her in the race and go from there. Yeah, keep her clean. Uh, Joey, I'm not going to insult you, but you probably don't expect to blow the doors off people. You're just happy to be in this race, right? I didn't come down here for a second. Okay. <laughs> All right. Then you heard it from me, and uh, that on my part, right? Joey plans on winning. That's right. That's why we're here. All right. Good luck, Joey. Hey, thank you for all you do. Josh St. Clair, one of the hometown favorites for sure, Josh, and uh, well, coming off a little bit of a rough weekend at the Oxford 250, you're hoping to rebound here at your home track? Yeah, for sure. I'm hoping I found everything that was wrong with it after that, that mess down there, so it uh, seems to be fast still, you know, and I know how to get around here, I think, so it, uh, hopefully we got a good shot at it today. Are you running Lightning McQueen too? Yeah, might as well. The thing never lets me down. <laughs> Lightning's always fast. Well, hey, I mean, on a regular night, I can expect you to go double duty, but I kind of thought you might want to just dedicate to the big $10,000 to win. Yeah, it's, it's dedicated to that anyway. I mean, I go out for 25 laps and lightning ain't no big deal, really. I'm not practicing much. I'm not going to run a heat race in it. Just focusing. As long as a good, the big car is ready, I'm going to run it. And if I have any doubts, then we won't be racing it. So, Or someone else will be steering it. Maybe you want to drive it. <laughs> I don't. I got to be on the mic, Josh. <laughs> but... Hey, yesterday, in yesterday's races, honest to God, I had a fan over there that came from uh, out of state, and they said they're here because they're a huge Lightning McQueen fan, and I said, sorry to break the news to you, Lightning ain't running today, he's running tomorrow, and so they said, all right, we'll be back tomorrow. Yeah, I believe that's a friend uh, of mine that I talked to, the Kellers. He, I went down uh, when I was a teenager and hunted on his land in New York, and so he'd come up here to watch. His boy enjoys Lightning McQueen a lot, so... I hope he gets to see him in the podium up there. Awesome. I hope so, too. Uh, what would you get, second last night? Yeah, second last night in a, in a fifth place car. Uh, <laughs> thank God for some people having short patience. Oh, <laughs> All right, have fun today, Josh. Thank you. You too. got the DCW09 of Jeremy Davis here. We are happy to have you, Jeremy. Is this your first visit this season to Wiscasset? It is this year. How you feeling out there? Uh, well, we broke in the first practice and missed the second one, so... Uh, well, how'd third practice go then? Uh, it waited around the track, but it made weird noises, so we'll see. What broke? Uh, drive shaft. Oh, I heard that. Uh, Wendy was uh, announcing that the 09's looking for a drive shaft, so did you find one from uh, a friendly crew? Yep, Hopkins had one. Nice. What a nice guy, right? Oh, yeah. He always is. But it was still uh, a little noisy coming from the drive shaft still? Yeah, something was, uh, I don't know. I'm going to keep working on it, see what I can do. All right. Keep at it, Jeremy. Good luck. Thank you.
crusty Poland, right, in the 44, and uh, you have came out a couple weeks ago for a weekly race. Uh, just a little shakedown for this one? Yeah, we were just trying to get ready to see what would happen. We were uh, really, really bad, so I'm kind of glad we showed up. <laughs> you know, we uh, changed a bunch of stuff in the car this week. Seemed to be pretty good now, so hopefully we can get a good run in the end of the 150. Well, what made you uh, want to come out to uh, Wiscasset? First time we've seen you this year. I just kind of wanted to come up and support Wiscasset after everything with Beechridge. There was guys that came down to Beechridge all the time, and obviously we lost the racetrack, so sucks. Don't want to see it happen, so I can at least do my part and say, hey, we went to Wiscasset, we supported them, so... Can we expect to see you maybe for a few more next year? There's a good chance of it. We'll see what happens. Yeah, we would definitely love to see it. Now, uh, does your family go way back at Beach Ridge? Is that correct? Yeah, my grandfather was at Beach Ridge the, the very first the very day. first day and then the very last day, right? Exactly. He's probably one of the very few to stay that. So we uh, we had our roots pretty deep there. So it stings, but we're still racing. It's all that matters. All right, Rusty Poland in the 44. Good luck today, my man. Thank see you, ya. man. All right, you can't have pre-race Boss Hog interviews without talking to the defending winner, Mike Hopkins. And uh, you've gone the last five Boss Hogs in the top three, Mike. Man, how's the car today? Honestly, uh, it's probably the best feeling car we've had that last practice. Um, we've never been down to the 1460s before, and we just run a 1467. And that's probably the best car I've had here, whether it stays or not. But um, this place has been good to me. I can't thank Port City Race Cars and uh, all that Wiscasset does. And it's going to be a good race, I hope. I heard you loaned a drive shaft to Jeremy Davis, huh? Absolutely. Jeremy and I have been friends for a long time, and Jeremy's a good competitor, and I want to see everybody race. Whether they beat me or they don't, uh, I want to I want to race some heads up. All right. And, uh, yeah, so you got uh, Gary Crooks. What's his position? He calling all the shots or what? Yeah, Gary's here. He decided to fly up late Friday night, uh, Saturday night, and uh, to be here today. And him and I got a great relationship as well as, you know, I, I fly the poor city flag, and so it uh, should be a good one. Um, who was running the other car at Oxford? Uh, Travis Stearns. Yeah, yeah, Travis Stearns. How'd that deal come about? Uh, Travis has helped me for years. Um, we've been friends, and he's, he's been helping me for the last couple of years. Actually, the last couple of wins I've had here, he's been here, and um, he always used to race, so we decided that we let him race the 250, and actually that car was quicker than the black car we had, and then we broke a shock, and we could never figure it out for the heat in the concy, and unfortunately, he didn't make the race, but... Uh, at least we made it the last two years. I sat on the sidelines, so that race can make you and break you, and it uh, caused a lot of heartache for sure. Okay, Mike, good luck today. Have fun. Thank you, bud. Appreciate it. All right, we thought Nick Reno was going to be in the 77 Pro Stock. What happened, Nick? Uh, well, we had some brake issues all day. Uh, we thought we had them straightened out, and we didn't. So we only got about half a brake pedal, and it just the with these cars is too much that we don't uh, we don't trust it to be in traffic and put the cars at risk. So you got the car here, right? Did you go out in the first practice, and it just yeah. wasn't? Yeah, we went out in all three practices, and the, and the car was um, a little off because we couldn't we couldn't hit plant the nose like we need to without having full brakes. So we. Uh, we decided to be in everybody's best interest if we just parked it for the day and get it straightened out and come back another day. All right, thanks for coming, Nick. Who are you going to be helping out now that you're not racing? Oh, we'll, we'll still be cheering on all of our friends and, and everybody else that's here, you know. Uh, we're pretty good with Joey Pastore, and I hope to see him have a good run today. All right, maybe I'll go find Joey. Have fun today. Thanks. So I'm going I'm to get it right. It's Evan Bullier? That's correct. Yes, sir. <laughs> oh, man, Evan, I always thought it was Bull you, so I'll make Very sure right. that I pronounce it right. And uh, we appreciate you guys' support. with. The
Now we gotta start off. That's all right. Uh, all right. With the Hancock Lumber team in the 56, Evan, you came to one tune-up race and back today. How you liking the place? Liking it a lot. The car is pretty good. Um, feeling like we're a lot better here Friday. Um, we just put stickers on and didn't go as well as I thought we'd go, but we're making good changes that I think are gonna help. Just had a decent draw. That's half the battle here. So in this, you know, with this many cars, so we'll see what we got. Yeah, they just just did the draw. So where are you starting? Starting fourth in uh, the fourth heat. So I'll take it. They, they're taking six. So just gotta hold on. All right, so top six in four heats. That's correct, yep. That's what they tell us anyway. All right, Evan, have fun today. I appreciate it, Nick. Thank Good you. Luck. Dave Farrington, you've had some luck in this race, but haven't quite been able to seal the deal yet. <laughs> you like the Boss Hog race? <laughs> oh, we love coming here. It's, uh, you know, we get to the auction 250, take a take a deep breath, and uh, we right back out of here for the Boss Hog 150. Uh, you know, Richard Finesse Jordan put on a great show. We got 40 cars here today. That's incredible for these guys, and uh, we've been on the podium quite a few times, and uh, we've won the coach, so obviously we want to win this one here soon. How's the car feeling in practice? Uh, <laughs> we didn't run the last round of practice, I guess, because we felt like we were good enough for then. So we were happy with it. Second round, and. Uh, Saved our stuff in that last round, and we'll fire off the heat race, see what we got. All right, good luck, Dave. Where Thanks. do you start in the heat? Where do you start? Pole in the third heat. All right, there you go. Nice run. Good luck today. Joey Pastori, you in a hurry? No, I'm not in a hurry. Hurry to go to the front. I'm just true dead last in heat four, I think. So dead last in heat four. Ouch. Got to make it through that qualifying. And uh, hey, going back to last week, you had some rough Oxford 250 qualifying, didn't you? That was rough. Yeah, <laughs> going the uh, Conci and everything else, but it all seemed to work out. Starting 38th and getting the seventh, so I was happy with that. So I guess we got our work cut out for us today. Slow and steady, just picking them off one by one. Slow and steady, not try to stay out of the wrecks. What's the strategy here? Uh, definitely try to race my way in in the heat race and then hopefully bide our time in that 150. So last in your heat, how many are in each heat? Ten. Woo. And they're taking top six? Top six. All right. Joey, how does uh, the car feel to, to you today? Car feels actually really good. It's got good drive. It rolls center pretty good. Um, stacked up against all the other fast guys there out in practice pretty well. I mean, we were seventh quick in the first two practices. We're pretty happy with it. So if we can uh, get some good laps in and not get in any trouble, I think we'll be all right. Did you make a run in this race last year? No, I did not. No, nope. first time. Never here. been here. First time here in a super late model. That's awesome. So, well, what have you been in before? A late model or a super street or something? Uh, super street. I've been here twice, and the last time I was here, I told it. So, <laughs> we'll see. Hopefully, we don't have that problem today. This place can be a little bit unforgiving. Yeah, no, we uh, broke an actual hub on the right front, driving into one, and it just went straight in the fence. So, we uh, definitely did a thorough nut and bolt check on it this week. All right, keep the pro stock clean today. Thank you, buddy. Trevor Sanborn, you're a past winner of this event, and uh, how'd you, you got second last year, right? Yeah, we uh, we didn't have a second place car, but a few cars fell off. I think we had like a fourth or fifth. We got lucky in that one. Um, this year, I don't really know where we stack up, to be honest. I think we're up somewhere in the top five, but there's some pretty stout field here today. I remember in Victory Lane last year, you said that I think that was the first race on a brand new car. Yeah, yeah it was the first race on the, not a new car, but a car that's new to me. Yep. And then here's another new car. Okay, well that Fury. was going to be my next question, if this was the same one. It's not? You got another new new no, one? No, this is Richard Moody's Fury car, so we're going to give a shot at it and see how it goes. Uh, pretty much calling all the shots today, so it's, it's hard on me to be a driver and call the shots. 
You're playing crew chief and driver today? Yeah, it's not that much fun, but, <laughs> you know, it's the only choice I have at this point, so we'll get what we can out of it. Some uh, good crew members being spread thin across some other teams, is that what's going on? No, our, our crew chief left us high and dry three, week, three or four weeks ago. We don't really know why, we never haven't heard from him, so <laughs> whatever, it isn't a big deal, but uh, it's just more stressful on me to worry about the race car, not worry about hitting the line perfect, you know? It's, it takes a lot to, to get these things to rip, and uh, this car is new to this track, like, they haven't really, haven't raced it here, we practiced here Friday, we thought we were pretty good, which we are, but there's always room for improvement. I'm never happy, it seems like. All right, Trevor, uh, last couple races always on top, so we're wishing you luck today and keep it clean. Yes, sir. Thank you, buddy. All right, ladies and gentlemen, and that's going to do it from the pit side. All right, ladies and gentlemen, good afternoon and welcome to West Cassid Speedway. It is Boss Hog 150 Day. How y'all doing out there today? I hope you guys are ready for a stack program today. We are going to have some fun as the Pro Stocks take center stage at Maine's fastest track for the annual running of the Boss Hog 150. $10,000 on the table. And let's get right to it. This is the first of four qualifying heats. Top six from each of the heat races will go straight to the main event. The rest will go to a pair of consolation heats where we'll take only the top three out of each. 15 lab heat races. Uh, there was uh, a misprint in the program. It says 20, but these are 15 lap heat races. Dan McKaig and Andy Gilbert on the front row. Josh St. Clair and Jeremy Davis on row two. Joey Paul Warczyk and Jet Decker on row number three. Sean Knight and Nick Hinckley on row four. Brian Lancaster and Ryan St. Clair fill out the field here for heat number one. Time to turn them loose. Let's go racing. You definitely got to race your way into the show this year. It's the Boss Hog 150 2023 qualifier number one. They're going to be 15 laps apiece, and you got to finish in the top six to carry on. And already Josh St. Clair trying to go for the top spot, looking for an inside groove underneath Dan McKeg, and he's going to do it. Bring it up wheel to wheel and go for the lead on lap three. With the advantage out of two, Josh St. Clair is your new leader, and Joey Pohl's going to follow up the inside. He'll put the 97 up into second, and here comes Hinkley as well, wasting no time. Contact with Dan McKeg and Hinkley. McKeg threads the needle and gets to the bottom. Lucky break there, Nick Hinkley cutting him some slack. And the top four are starting to pull away, with the top five being led by Jeremy Davis. And then it's Andy Gilbert in the 17 on the bubble. We're looking for the top six, and they are side by side for sixth position. Jet Decker now coming in to transfer spots. Jet Decker in the transfer spot now up into sixth, and he puts Andy Gilbert out of qualifying contention at the moment. Oh boy, in our last Pro Stock event, Jet Decker was our second place car in the 01, looking just as strong as ever with a stout field tonight. In the most recent weekly Pro Stock race, it was Kevin Douglas and Jet Decker one and two. Qualifier number one is gonna see the halfway flags with Josh St. Clair in command. Joey Pohl gives chase as well as Dan McKeg, and for a brief moment it looked like Hinkley might have something for McKeg, but certainly not now. The top three is pulling away a little bit from Hinkley. Not a whole lot of action for the bubble transfer spot now. Looks like Jet Decker has it quite comfortably as Andy Gilbert falls back about three spots. Three car lengths, that is. And they've got five to go. Usually on a weekly night they have 10 lap heats and these ones are 15 to give them a little extra time to get in the big show. We might have a battle shaping up for second. 
Joey Paul and Dan McKaig are in the show, but McKaig might want one more spot. He's working on the back bumper of Joey Pohl for second. Just St. Clair turning a 14.9 for his quickest lap time in this qualifier with two laps left. Last time around, Josh St. Clair was at 15.2. He slowed it up, getting a little bit comfortable in that position. Coming to the white flag, running 15.2, and we've got trouble with Ryan St. Clair. Ryan St. Clair in the 51. Looks like he didn't put down any fluid on the backside, so they'll keep it rolling to the checkered flag with Josh St. Clair, his brother. All right, doesn't look like that was a fluid situation. Looks like it's a broken panard bar with J-Bar uh, J and Ryan St. Clair as the rear axle is certainly not aligned. Another 15 laps and looking for the top six. Trouble with Daniel Harding. Looks like he missed a shift, but well, he's got, oh, we've got huge carnage at the top of turn two. I don't know what happened there, huge chain reaction. All right, Mike Carlton uh, up there in turn two, letting us know both drivers are okay. Dave has been at this game. He started racing up in Unity Speedway, Unity Raceway back in 1965. This makes it a little bit easier to get in the show. Looking for the top six, so only two left on the track are gonna get knocked out of this heat race. And Ashline from the unpreferred high line takes command over Angelo Belicito. Trevor Sanborn's gonna follow suit with some more neon yellow colors around the high side of Belcito, putting the eight car back to third. Kelly Moore leads the rest of the field in fourth. Side by side for the final transfer spots, Daniel Harding and Junkyard Joe. Jimmy Wright wants a piece of the action. He is on the outside looking in. The 84 needs to get in the top six. And he's gonna do it right there. Junkyard Joe gets hung out to dry and he falls out of the transfer spot now. Junkyard Joe in seventh, Matty Beers in eighth. Here comes Ashline. Trevor Sanborn not really closing in. Belsito keeping Sanborn honest, keeping that rear view mirror full as the uh, entire top three pull away from the rest. Looks like the top three have it quite comfortably. Kelly Moore getting a little bit more breathing room as well as Daniel Harding washes high and allows the door to be open for Jamie Wright. Jamie Wright climbs into the top five and Harding has got to be a little nervous. He's got Matty Beers on the outside looking in now, looking for the top six. Something looks to be a miss on Ashline as he lost a lot of ground on Sanborn in a hurry. Sanborn is all over that back bumper at the halfway point. Ben Ashline's fastest time has been a 15 flat, but he has dropped to 15.3 in recent laps. He files back in single file behind the 44. And we got trouble for Daniel Harding. Out of turn four, Harding with a solo car spin. He brings it to a stop, unfortunately, so the yellow has to come out. Just a heads up, they will get one more chance though. The outside of the top six cars will go to the Concies and get another chance at getting in the big show. But we've got a good charge up front for a moment there. They were side by side, but Sanborn clears. Looks like these guys got some good short run cars on Angelo Belicito. 
The eight was able to maintain with them prior to the caution, but now the top two are running away. Sanborn and Ashline. Jamie Wright up to fourth now. In tow behind the top three. And Harding climbing back into the top five. Kelly Moore on the high side. Moore trying to do a crossover move and he threads the needle right across the nose of Matty Beers. Beers is the most recent feature winner at Wiscasset Pro Stock Competition. And Beers is on the outside looking in. We got contact with Kelly Moore and Daniel Harding. My, 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 things are really heating up in the closing laps. White flag has flown. So there are no yellows after the white flag. They're coming to the checkered. It's Sanborn and Ashline top two. Even in the main event, in the big 150, if there's an accident on the final lap and the leaders have taken the white, then the next one ends it. And what a great start for this one. Still two by two. Farrington and Ryan Kuhn. Then it's Shane Clark in the top three. Rusty Poland files in single file before Connor Winters can get there and gets to the bottom. Connor Winters now rounding out your top five. They're battling for the final transfer spot. As they sit, Brett Osmond is in the show, but they are stacking up behind him. Dalton Gagnon getting stuck on the high side in the 34. Here comes Hot Rod Mike Hopkins. Mike Hopkins treading lightly. He did a pretty good job there. I saw him check up going into one a little bit, making sure that Osman wasn't gonna slam the door on him and he didn't, so Hopkins takes the spot. A Little bit of slamming as Garrett Hall tries to motor on through. He's still on the outside looking in. Garrett Hall climbs up to seventh. He needs one more spot to guarantee he's in the show. Farrington starting to check out with a three car length cushion on Ryan Kuhn and Shane Clark. Rusty Poland, he's got them stacking up behind him with Connor Wenners and Hot Rod Mike Hopkins. Connor Wenners running in defense mode right now. He is just staying glued to the bottom will not let Mike Hopkins down there, so Hopkins retreats to the high side. Hopkins gets by, Garrett Hall is gonna follow suit and try to stay glued on the back bumper of the Port City number 15. Halfway through qualifier number three, they are side by side for the final transfer spot. Connor Winters desperately trying to hang on, but here comes Garrett Hall. That time at the line, Garrett Hall had the spot, but a good run out of one and two. Winters is fighting back strong in the four car. Here we go for five to go. What a battle shaping up for the final transfer spot. Look at Connor Winters down the back chute. He is still holding on to it. Four laps left. Mike Hopkins climbs up to fourth, going around the high side of Rusty Poland. And the battle still ensues for the final transfer spot. Contact by Garrett Hall into the back bumper of winners. He's gonna upset the four car and try to utilize that to get by going into six. Will Connor Winters get him back? He sure does. Two laps left. Connor Winters 
might be a young one, but he's not going to get picked on by the outsiders. Connor Winters fights back to climb back into six. White flag in hand. Here we go. For the final transfer, Garrett Hall gets back by going into one. And he takes over six now. It looks like he might have it in the bag. Certainly a stacked heat race right here. A lot of heavy hitters in this one and it is all by luck of the draw. Max Cookson certainly been a hot shoe this season at other tracks. They're gonna pull away and get a comfortable cushion on the field, Max Cookson and J.R. Robinson, as they leave Ryan Littlefield in the 29 to fend off the rest of them. He's got Austin Terrace hot on his heels. Everybody trying to get to the bottom as quick as possible. Evan Bullier getting hung out to dry. And Bullier's right on the transfer as Nick Calvert has something to say, but he goes around. I don't think anybody was to blame on that one except for Calvert. Geesh, I don't think there was any contact with anybody else on that. Yeah, that'll bring out the first caution here with three complete. All 10 cars still on the track, four of them will be moving to the Concy. Oh, and bringing it in nice and tight down to the flag stand. Both of them hammer down at the same time, but down the back shoot, Max Cookson clears Robinson once again. Austin Terrace powers around the high side of Littlefield to take third. Here comes Logan Melcher, rounding out your top five and all over the back bumper of Littlefield. Joe Pastore on the transfer spot. He's in sixth, but he's got some heavy hitters on the back bumper, one including Kevin Douglas for sure. Douglas will not be a bad guy and move somebody up off the bottom. He's going to play nice and go to the high side and start working on the 20. Melcher goes to the top as well. Melcher, will this pay off for him? He's going to slowly but steadily work on Ryan Littlefield in the 29. Austin Terrace gets underneath J.R. Robinson for second. Boy, doesn't that 29 sound good. That built motor is screaming on the 29 of Austin Terrace, sounding stout in second. The outside did not play favorable for Kevin Douglas. He is a couple spots out of the transfer. Melcher working on Littlefield, just about clears. He's gonna do it. Logan Melcher clears Ryan Littlefield for fourth. He'll get back down to the inside apron. Littlefield still in the show. He's playing defense on Joe Pastore right now. Four laps to go. Kevin Douglas with a second win. Pastore moves Littlefield up and they go three wide. Kevin Douglas is in the top six at the moment with a nose on Evan Bullier. They are slamming out of turn four. Evan Bullier and Kevin Douglas fighting to get in the show and they are slamming on the front side. Kevin Douglas finally clears. Two laps left. Smooth sailing from Max Cookson. Austin Terrace, J.R. Robinson, Logan Melcher, Joe Pastore, and the defending pro stock Wiscasset champion Kevin Douglas is in the top six. Things are now looking pretty well sorted here for the final lap. It got interesting moments ago, but the checkered flag flies over Max Cookson. With a 
first in qualifier number four. That should put Max Cookson on the outside of rope two. Conti number one, top three transfer. Joey Doyon tries to power around the high side of the regular Andy Gilbert. Joey Doyon's first pro stock appearance this season. Andy Gilbert is a regular in the 17 car. And these cars are screaming. Love the sound of that side exit exhaust. Over 500 horsepower on these machines. Junkyard Joe was unable to maintain on the high side, so right now he's on the bubble, and there's contact. Sean Knight gets into the back of Joe, and the yellow flies on Conti number one. Close quarters in turn one. A little contact between them again as well. Lancaster trying to Pinch Gilbert down and get all the bottom groove traction that he can find. But out of turn four that time, Lancaster did not stay pinched down. So Gilbert is going to easily take it that time. And Matty Beers fills the bottom before Lancaster can get to the apron. Whoa, close quarters and Matty Beers goes around. Sean Knight. Gets into him hard. Sean Knight does not look so well either. Can't imagine he can fix that with two courtesy laps. So only one is going to be eliminated from this Nazi now. Slight contact again in the middle of one and two. Andy Gilbert and Ryan St. Clair. Joey Doyon unable to keep it up tight, allowing Ryan St. Clair to file in single file. Now Lancaster trying to clear Junkyard Joe and get to the bottom as quickly as he can. And we're all single file now. Everybody to the bottom. Lancaster in that third transfer position and Junkyard Joe is out as they stand. Andy Gilbert comes to us on a weekly basis all the way from Jackman, a three hour drive to race with us every Saturday night. Halfway flags are out. Gilbert starting to pull away from Ryan St. Clair. He's turning 15.2 uh, is the lap times for Andy Gilbert. St. Clair turning 15.4. Two seconds off of Gilbert's pace, but maintaining that second spot. Five to go. Junkyard Joe's gonna park it. So the three remaining cars on the track are your transfer cars, it looks like. Andy Gilbert, Ryan St. Clair, Brian Lancaster are gonna move on to the main event for the Boss Hog 150. $10,000 on the line to win. $1,000 halfway bonus for the Boss Hog 150 this evening. Two laps left. These guys have it in the bag. Andy Gilbert, Ryan St. Clair, Brian Lancaster coming around for the white flag in Conti number one of two. Andy Gilbert out of Jackman is going to pick up the first Conti. A 
A lot more on the line. I think we had six in the first one after a, cu uh, a couple of them dropped out. But this time we've got a full field of eight for the final Concy. We don't like to do it by sending cars home, but there's just not quite enough room on the track for everybody that's here. So unfortunately, a few cars are gonna be sent back in this evening. Five of them will be going home after the finish of this one. And currently in the top three transfer spots, it's Connor Winters, Evan Bullier, and Brett Osmond. Evan Bullier looking to the top side of Winners to challenge for the top spot. Connor Winners all out of shape out of turn four. I don't think he had any help on that one, but he certainly had a nice save all by himself. He gets into the back of Evan there to take the top spot back. Oh man, Evan does not want to stay on the top side for too long. Connor Wenner's back in command by a couple car lengths. Evan Bullier threads the needle and gets back to the bottom in front of Brett Osmond. Evan with a bobble out of turn four. Man, it's getting sketchy for second and third. Evan hangs on to it and already gathers up a couple car lengths on Osmond now. Osmond gets turned around. Brett Osmond gets turned around. Hats off to him for keeping this race rolling without a yellow. And now Calvert is in the third position. Those two are a couple of regulars that are here every Saturday. And I imagine there's gonna be some choice words between Brett Osmond's team and Nick Calvert. Wow. This one is all Connor Winters and Evan Bullyu past halfway now. Calvert, not likely to catch him, but he's got to hold on to third. This one's not over for the win. Bullier is coming back strong with a second wind and Winters leaves the inside open. Bullier's gonna take it nice and easy. Evan Bullier in the official Hancock Lumber number 56. Now your Concy number two leader. Brett Osman goes a lap down, but now he wants to race with him. Keep your eyes on that one. Two laps to go for Evan Bullier. Bullier is checking out in a hurry. A half a straightaway on Connor, now with the white flag in hand. Calvert on the bubble, and he's got the 34 of Dalton Gagnon closing in. Coming to the checkered flag for the final qualifiers. Well, there's, things certainly got uh, sketchy there. Some choice words between Osmond and Calvert, but Calvert unofficially transfers with a third place finish.
All right, ladies and gentlemen, uh, we are just about ready to give you driver intros here for the 2023 Boss Hog 150. Well, again, we want to thank Bath Iron Works and General Dynamics for being the presenting sponsor this weekend, along with our associate sponsors, Holtz Yard Improvements, Oxford Auto Salvage, B&D Burner Service, and LLP Transport. Before we give you the drivers, I want to introduce some folks down there in Victory Lane in our receiving line. First of all, I want to welcome a couple members of Wreaths Across America. We have Michael Edgham, who's the vice chairman of the board for Wreaths Across America and a U.S. veteran himself. And Kevin Woodward, veteran and worker bee for Wreaths Across America. Thank you, gentlemen, for all your service. And of course, we couldn't do this without these two people, our fearless leaders here at Wiscasset Speedway. It all starts with these guys, Richard and Vanessa Jordan. We've got our flagman and chief starter, Nate Sennett. Our race director and competition director, Scott Chabuck, is working the line, so we, we want to give a shout out to him. Uh, down there in Victory Lane also, we have our uh, head of the Ward and Son Construction Kids Club, Penny Charette, along with our junior official today, Juliana Haas. And last but not least, folks, this is the guy this race is named after. He started this race back in 1991. He tried to get in it today. He is a main racing Hall of Famer, a Wiscasset Speedway Hall of Famer. Ladies and gentlemen, give it up for Boss Hog, Dave St. Clair. Geez, I, I might even have some fans left out here after that great race I had there in the heat race. But, <laughs> but I, I wanted to thank uh, Follies for helping me, LLP, Jamie and Johnny, uh, my wife, my daughter, I don't know if this is on TV or not, but I'm sure she's real excited. Uh, she didn't even want me to be down here racing. Uh, Linda and Pete in Florida, Zach and Russ in Florida, Jerry and Lincia. I know they're watching if this is on TV down there. And by the way, Linda, I got your T-shirt. Uh, and all the, all the teams that are out here have done a lot of, lot of work to get here. They may not all be the fastest, but they all worked had to get here, every one of them. And they all deserve to win. They're not all going to win. There's only going to be one winner, but they all worked very hard to get here. And I'd like to compliment them and the fans and the Jordans for having me here. Thank you. Thank you, David. Thank you very much, Dave St. Clair. Folks, are you ready to meet our drivers? Yeah. Whoop. That's the wrong music. Bear with me for a second. I'm doing this single-handedly up here. Nick's down there uh, helping things out. Let's go with this one right here. That's my bed music for our driver intros. Starting from the back of the field in the 32nd starting position, driving the little field excavation and paving, black magic seal coating, number 29 out of Dayton, Maine. Welcome, Ryan Littlefield. Starting in the 31st position, driving the Charlie's Family of Dealerships and McCain Electric number 11B out of Farmingdale. Welcome, Matty Beers. In the 30th starting position, driving the Ward Water and Mud City Dive Services 07 from Steep Falls. Welcome, Nick Calvert. In the 29th starting position, Driving the Whitmore's Real Estate and Colebrook Trailers number 81 out of Skowhegan. Welcome, Brian Lancaster. In the 28th starting position, driving the Footbridge Barbecue and Ace Well Service number four from Edgecombe. Welcome, Connor Winners. In the 27th starting position is the Dave's World, sponsored number 51 from Liberty. Welcome, Ryan St. Clair. Starting in the 26th position, sponsored by Sunday Morning Farm and Hancock Lumber. In the number 56 from Durham, welcome, Evan Bollier.
Starting in the 25th position, driving the MDG Logging, sponsor number 17 from Jackman, welcome Andy Gilbert. In the 24th starting position, driving the JT's Place and John Sullivan, sponsor number 18, the 2021 winner of the Boss Hog 150 from Sydney, welcome Kevin Douglas. Starting in the 23rd position, driving the Norms used cars and Black Point Motorsports number 94 from Scarborough, welcome Garrett Hall. Starting in the 22nd position, he drives the Burgess Race Fabrication and Marshall's Custom Machine number 38 from Fairfield. Welcome Daniel Harding. Starting 21st, driving the RB Performance and Home Auto Group number 01. The thrill from Chesterville. Welcome Joe uh, Jet Decker. Up to the 20th starting position in the UPP Concrete and a UPP and DC Concrete sponsored number 20 from West Bath. Welcome Joe Pastore. Starting 19th, driving the Midcoast Glass and Trans East Equipment number 44 from Wyndham. Welcome Rusty Poland. Up to the 18th starting position is a New England Motorsports and Maine Motorsports Hall of Famer driving the RC Moore Trucking, number 47 from Scarborough. Welcome Kelly Moore. Starting 17th in the Davis Chassis Works and TD Cleaning Company 09 from Tamworth, New Hampshire. Welcome Jeremy Davis. To row number eight on the outside, starting 16th, is Wiscasset's 2017 Driver of the Year in the TNL Automotive and Dash Shield Transport number 41 from Jay. Welcome, Logan Melcher. Starting in 15th is the reigning Boss Hog champion. He's won this twice. He's been on the podium five straight Boss Hog 100s. In the Hopkins Paving and Thayer Race Engines, number 15 from Herman. Welcome, Hot Rod, Mike Hopkins. Starting in the 14th position, he was finished third in this race last year in the Bath Electrical and Gilman Electric Supply, number 84 from Woolwich. Welcome, Jamie Wright. Starting 13th. He is a two-time Pro Stock Champion here at Wiscasset. And the Ideal Portable Toilets, number 15 from Wiscasset. Welcome, Nick Hinckley. To row number six on the outside, starting at 12th. He drives the BNS Bait and high and mighty number 28 out of Stuban. Welcome, J.R. Robinson. Starting in, whoops, sorry, starting in the, in the 11th position, he drives the Littlefield Farms and Harvey RB and Via Marine, sponsor number 21 from Winterport. Welcome, Shane Clark. To the 10th, 10th starting position, driving the Bell Boys Trucking and Nats Race Engines, number eight from Oxford, Massachusetts. Welcome, Angelo Belsito. Starting in ninth is our Wiscasset July Driver of the Month in the SOS Towing and Webster Service Center, number 40 from Gorham. Welcome Dan McCaig Jr. Starting in the eighth position on the outside of row four in the GT overhead door in Cushman competition, number 29 from Wyndham. Welcome Austin Terrace. Starting seventh 
is the 2022 Pro All-Star Series champion in the Everett Auto Parts and Bernier's Liquors, number 72 from East Bridgewater, Massachusetts. Welcome, Ryan Kuhn. Starting sixth outside of row number three, he was the winner of the 2019 Boss Hog 150. And the Picard's plowing in work store number 99 from Fairfield. Welcome, Ben Ashline. Starting in fifth is a former ACT late model champion, driving the Poles Automotive and Rocco's Pizza Bar and Grill, number 97 from Hudson, New Hampshire. Welcome, Joey Paul Wartzik. Now your heat winners. Winner of heat number four starts in the fourth position. He drives the JM Builders and CNC Properties number 39 from Pittsfield. Welcome Max Cookson. Starting in the third position, winner of heat number three, driving the Norms Used Cars number 23 from Jay. Welcome Dave Farrington Jr. And the front row, your winner of heat number two. He's the 2020 Boss Hog 150 champion. Driving the Smokers Haven and Helios Collective number 44 from Parsons Field. Welcome Trevor Sanborn. And at the pole position is the grandson of the great Boss Hog Dave St. Clair. Driving the Dave's World, number 14, out of Liberty, welcome Josh St. Clair. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, at this time, if you would all please rise if able, remove your hats and direct your attention to the flag in the middle of the infield. As we Offer our invocation. Today it will be performed by Pastor Rob Green of the Lighthouse Baptist Church of Farmingdale. Would you pray with me? Father in heaven, we thank you for this day, for the beauty of it. We thank you for each of these drivers and their teams. As has already been said, Lord, a lot of work went into this. We ask that you give safety today, and Lord, that we would enjoy it. In Jesus' name, amen. Please remain standing as we now offer our national anthem. Oh, say can you see Drivers, prepare your cars for competition. Let's send it down to Boss Hog himself to give the command. Gentlemen, start your engines. Just one more time, get up on your feet and send these drivers off with a salute. Wave the hats, wave the hands. Small children, whatever you want, wave your hands and 
salute these drivers as they salute you. The Boss Hog 150 is coming next. Thank you to BIW, General Dynamics, and our participating associate sponsors. Oh, thank you to you fans for packing the house. Chief starter Nate Sennett checks them over. Pace car will take the turn in. Here they come to start the Boss Hog 150. Everybody packed up tight down the back chute, trying to hold it all together in the early going. Josh St. Clair, Trevor Sanborn side by side. Dave Farrington in the third spot. Matt Cookson in fourth. They were looking at three wide back in the pack. Pastore has to get out of it as he was crowded by Harding. Trevor Sanborn leads them across the line that time in the 44. Strong on the outside of Josh St. Clair in the 14. Farrington waits in third. Cookson now back a couple of car lengths in the fourth position. Joey Polwartzik in fifth, just ahead of the 99 of Ben Ashline. Then you got a side-by-side -side run for position. Ryan Kuhn and the 29 of Austin Terrace washed way up high out of the turn, and Terrace lost two positions in the process. Trying to make that outside lane work. Sanborn... Finally had to give up the outside lane and settle it in behind Dave Farrington into the third position. First five in the books, ready to complete lap number six this time by. Terrace, the only one on the outside, trying to find a place to get down in line. He does right in front of Josh St. Clair, uh, right in front of Nick Hinckley, that is, in the 15. Behind Hinckley is the 15 of Mike Hopkins. Keep an eye on him. He said he had a strong car today. Another car didn't really qualify well, but you want to keep an eye on him. He's always a strong contender. It's that former winner of the Boss Hog, the number 18 of Kevin Douglas. But Douglas right now, he is mired way back in traffic in the 24th position. St. Clair leading the freight train. We have lap sponsors for all 150 laps, but those were to boost up the purse. So the only laps that pay are halfway, a $1,000 halfway leader bonus. And of course, $10,000 to win the leader of lap 150. Right now, the guy's settling in and logging laps. Keeping an eye on any cars trying the outside right now. Rusty Poland trying to make something happen in the 44. Poland is way back there in 15th. St. Clair setting a torrid pace. And he is within a straightaway of the back of the field as got the 11B of Maddie Beers. He got in on a points provisional and Beers will be the first car to go a lap down as it cross the line this time. Beers gets right up out of line. Josh St. Clair in the 14 he said he's had tough luck from the pole position in this race in years past and he's not kidding. He would love to win this race. He's got two Coastal 200 victories and he would love to pick up a Boss Hog 150 and become just the third driver to win both Crown Jewel races. Top 10 right now, Josh St. Clair in the 14, Farrington in the 23, Sanborn in the 44, Max Cookson fourth in the number four, Joey Pohl running fifth in the 97, Ashline sixth in the 99, Ryan Kuhn is seventh in the 72, Dan McKay Jr. Eighth, 
Shane Clark ninth and Austin Terrace running 10th as the cars are spread out all the way around this 3 8 mile racetrack. St. Clair now starting to get into some lap traffic. He's gonna have the 81 of Brian Lancaster up ahead of him. He's in danger of being the next car to go a lap down, but instead he'll put his brother Ryan a lap down that time by the stripe. Matty Beers looks like he's ready to tap out. Matt Beers. Not his day, but he is coming off his first career pro stock win just a week ago. Josh St. Clair, 14, has led right from the drop of the green flag. Had a early challenge from the number 44, Trevor Sanborn. Sanborn led a couple laps from the outside, but it's been St. Clair in charge all the way since. And now Josh is starting to stretch out an advantage over Brian Lancaster in the 80, uh, 81 is the lap car. Stretching out an advantage now over the 23 of Dave Farrington Jr. Trevor Sanborn settled into this third position. There goes Ryan St. Clair down pit road. He will be the next car to drop out. So far, lap traffic cooperating, but there's some fierce racing going on about a straightaway ahead of the leader as drivers are fighting for position and looking to stay up on the lead lap. Ryan Littlefield, the next one in the crosshairs to be put a lap down. We will complete the first 25 laps, this time by the stripe. Josh St. Clair. Little breathing room now over the 23 of Dave Farrington, who's about a 1.2 seconds behind. Things heating up a little bit for the third spot, though. Trevor Sanborn has got a mirror full of the 39 of Max Cookson. Just as the four of Connor Wenners goes down pit road. Wenners dropping out. These guys turning lap times right about 15 seconds. Actually, has dropped down to about 15.5 the last couple times for St. Clair. Again, these drivers wanting to get in a good rhythm, but also save their stuff for the closing laps of the race. Again, as they're running on just one set of tires in this 150 lapper. Nate Sennett continues to work the passing flag on the 29 of Ryan Littlefield. Trevor Sanborn doesn't want to have to hold off Max Cookson any long. Uh, Sanborn, nice job moving up out of the way. Let's the 39 of Max Cookson go by and go into the third position. That will shuffle the 44 back into fourth. Joey Paul Wartzik still holding the fifth position. Now Josh has got a few cars fighting to stay on the lead lap and he's gonna have to kinda carefully bide his time through this one. Calvert in the 07 right in front of him. Getting into the back bumper, Logan Melcher in the 41. Couple of youngsters going at it, just a little ahead of St. Clair as well. The 17 of Andy Gilbert and the 38 of Daniel Harding racing for position. Half straight away ahead of the race leader. Joe Pastore's waiting behind them, but I'm not sure if he's gonna wanna wait much longer. And Pastore pulls underneath the Gilbert. Able to get position underneath. Harding gets that spot for himself. Pastore moves the 20 car. That's a battle for 23rd and 24th, but key positions as they are in the clutches now the race leader Josh St. Clair. St. Clair's got a half straightaway lead and now second place changes hands. 
as Max Cookson able to get on the bottom side and take over second away from Dave Farrington. Farrington gets it down in line. Oh, trouble up in a turn number one. And I knew things were getting a little crazy just in front of the race leader. And Josh had to stop to uh, keep from plowing into them, but looks like Harding, Gilbert, and Calvert, also the 41 of Logan Melcher involved. Melcher able to drive away, but the other three have come to a stop. That, uh, that battle had been heating up for quite a bit right there in front of the leader. Uh, he had a switch for position right behind the leader as well in those uh, last couple laps. Nick Hinckley going down pit road along with Austin Paris in the 29. The pace cars picked up the field, now pit road open and you got a bunch of cars going down pit road for adjustments with 35 laps complete. I think that one began with Joey Pastore in the 20 trying to get by Daniel Harding. I believe they came together. Harding going around and Andy Gilbert, I think he's, you're gonna see he probably took the worst hit. He got into the wall before he got into Harding. And as far as Nick Calvert, I don't think he quite hit the wall too hard, but he obviously jacked up Gilbert's car and got into the back of him pretty hard. But I'm very surprised Gilbert's able to roll away. I thought that the whole right side of the 17 would be wiped right off, but. Yeah, Gilbert heading back down pit road. Couple cars coming back after service. Dave Farrington and Trevor Sanborn tucking up tight in the second row. And Max Cookson. At the moment, he might be done being patient. He wants to take command. He's gonna do it. He hit that nitrous button, keeping that car in reserve so far, but right now, it's crucial to get up front and start setting the pace. Maybe slow down the pace if that's what he wants to do. Josh St. Clair was trying, it looked like he was trying to pull away earlier. Max Cookson might not wanna do that. He might wanna just get in front and stay a uh, car length or two in front and not try to pull away. Josh St. Clair is gonna keep him honest. For the moment, those two are able to break away by about four or five car lengths and Sanborn, he's trying to fend off Farrington right now. Ben Ashline is in the top five. There is no lap money in this race, so there is no reason to uh, lead it for lap money, but there is a halfway bonus and that'll come up on lap 75 for $1,000. So last week you saw Max Cookson lead over 100 laps in the Oxford 250 and he picked up 100 bucks a piece for that, but right now there's no lap money except for lap 75 with a $1,000 bonus. Surprisingly, Sanborn is not closing in. So I wonder if Sanborn's giving it all he has right now and trying to close in on them, but can't quite do it. Josh St. Clair's getting a little aggressive on Max Cookson. Max got a little loose going into one. Josh tucked the nose in there, just showing him that he is gonna capitalize if Max Cookson slips up. And he does it again, just like the lap before. If Max Cookson wants to set the pace, then he is gonna have to stay closer to the apron than that. Josh being a weekly regular here and up there in the regular pro stock points. He certainly knows how to run this place and uh, maybe Max is gonna say, you can have it if you want it that bad. St. Clair reclaims command after leading the first 35 before the caution. Max just now led about nine of them and now Josh is back up front. They're coming up on the 17 of Andy Gilbert once again. Gilbert involved in that caution pretty hard. And he is slowing up quite a bit, staying up out of the racing line as the leaders come. Sanborn is closing in now. 
Keeping the top two honest. Any of these guys could have a car saved for the end. Look who's cracked the top five. It is Mike Hopkins who has gotten by Ben Ashline, and he is coming, folks. We are approaching one third of the way through the race. Two laps left until lap 50. Gilbert pulls up and lets the leaders on through. Ben Asline back to sixth. Ryan Kuhn, seventh. Dan McKeg Jr. in eighth. Shane Clark in ninth. Jeremy Davis makes up your top 10. They're stacked up right there. Right behind uh, Jeremy Davis is the battle for 11th. It's Jet Decker and Garrett Hall right up tight on his back bumper. The top 10 are running single file, relatively all spread out, but things are really tightening up behind Jet Decker. He's got Garrett Hall. He's got the 2021 winner of this race, Kevin Douglas in the 18, the 29 of Austin Terrace, Anthony Belsito in the eight. All of these guys are bumper to bumper. Nobody wants to get up off the bottom. Back up front we go. Hopkins is gonna take over fourth from Dave Farrington now. Hopkins is on the move. Farrington back to fifth. Ben Ashline closing back in on those guys. He might be thinking it's time to pick up the pace here now that we are on lap 53. Past one third of the way through the race. Garrett Hall able to get one position closer to the top 10 as he got by Jet Decker. Meanwhile, up front, the conveyor belt continues with Josh St. Clair leading the way. Cookson had a taste of the lead, but again, looking big picture as he settles it back down into second. Trevor Sanborn third. The guy on the move is Mike Hopkins in that number 15. Hopkins started this race back in 15th. He's advanced 10 positions through the first 50 laps. Now we're gonna start lining up some cars to possibly go a lap down. The next one in sights is Kelly Moore. The last car in the lead lap is the number 47. Josh St. Clair within a half a straightaway of Kelly Moore. Nick Calvert goes back down pit road. His day maybe coming to an end or he'll... Here goes Hopkins still on the move. Mike Hopkins cracks the top three. Hot Rod Hopkins making that 15 car work. He said he had his fastest car he's had here. And that is a scary thing for a guy who's been on the podium five straight years. He's got a way to go now to catch the 39 of Max Cookson from a half a straightaway. That's about a second and a half. 60 laps down. Still a long way to go in this one as the stun starts setting behind the back stretch. The track will start cooling down. Those speeds will start coming back up. These guys are back in the mid 15s now. St. Clair right to the back bumper now with the number 47 of Kelly Moore. Kelly will give him the outside, so St. Clair sets up shop out there and will drive around the 47. Not the day for the Hall of Famer in that 47 car. Kelly Moore, next car to go a lap down. So that leaves us with 23 cars left on the lead lap. Jamie Wright in the, 90, the 84 is the next car. Another car looking like he's getting ready to go is that number 99 of Ben Ashline. Ashline looks to the inside of Dave Farrington. Ben Ashline backs out of it. 
That is for fifth and sixth position. Remember, there's $1,000 on the table for the leader of halfway. Kevin Douglas still working the outside when he can. But he's got a lap car up there in front of him. He may have to get out of it. Oh, close call into turn number one. Terrace gets out of it and lets the 18 in there. That could have been scary. Evan Beaulieu in the number 56 gets put a lap down. Now Jamie Wright, the 84 car. He finished third in this race last year, and he is in danger of being the next car to go a lap down as we are just short of halfway. Right now, Max Cookson unchallenged in that second spot. Looks like Hopkins is just a little bit faster. Although last time Hopkins was a tenth off of the lead pair. Dave Farrington starting to fade a little bit. Ryan Kuhn comes up the inside in the 72. Put Ryan Kuhn into the fifth position. Farrington drops outside the top five for the first time in this race. Dan McCaig Jr. doing a good job in the naughty 40. He holds down seventh. Ben Ashline had made some good headway, but all he has faded all of a sudden. Ashline back to eighth. Shane Clark ninth. And tenth belongs to Jeremy Davis. As the lights come on, halfway, Josh St. Clair pockets a cool $1,000 for leading the first or leading lap 75. Max Cookson trying to keep him in sight. The half straight away back behind the leader. Rusty Poland, the latest car to be put a lap down. Joe Pastore is the next one in the crosshairs in car number 20. Right now, 20 cars on the lead lap. But Josh St. Clair trying to now make that 19 cars. He knows Pastore can be a potent car, but not his day today in that number 20 machine. With a nearly half straightaway advantage, St. Clair can afford to carefully pick his way by that number 20. Tries the inside. Pastore now pulls up out of the way. St. Clair will dispose of him and put the 20 car, who is in 20th place, a lap down. That leaves the next car being the number 97 of Joey Paul Warzik. Joey Paul was up in the top five for much of the race, but that 97 car just not up to full song today for him as it's been fading here through the midsection of this race. Josh St. Clair still hasn't faded a bit. Maintaining that five or so car length cushion on Max Cookson. And Hopkins, surprisingly, hasn't been closing in either. It's a tough battle to try to stay patient and save the tires, but also you never know when a caution's gonna fly if there even is a caution. And if this thing could go to the end of it, caution free. Mike Hopkins is certainly letting them get a little bit out of sight with the top two in front of him. Two, two uh, lapped cars in between them right now. Joey Pohl, we got a spin in turn one. And that is 
a caution that a lot of people were looking for. And they're staying neck and neck. Cookson, despite being on the high side, says it is time to turn up the wick. Hopkins is going to get by the lapped cars nice and easy. Hopkins gets by Joey Pohl and Joe Pistori. And he's the third place car on the track and up to third now in front of those lapped cars. Lapped cars put. What a crossover move by Cookson. Caught Josh St. Clair off guard down the back chute and Cookson is now to the inside. A door slam coming out of four. Josh St. Clair tries to return the move but can't make a stick and Cookson puts a car length between them. Going into three, Josh St. Clair drives it in hard to reel him back in but can't hold it. Cookson pulls away. Mike Hopkins up tight on the back bumper of St. Clair now. He's going to go to the high side and be friendly to try to take second away from St. Clair. Joey Pohl in the 97 is maintaining with the top three, but he is a lapped car. The fourth place car is Ryan Kuhn in the 72. Hopkins opens up the inside underneath St. Clair and he takes it. St. Clair doesn't put up much of a fight there. Hopkins moves up to second. He's going to give chase to Max Cookson now. Ryan Kuhn in fourth and making up your top five is Ben Ashline keeping Kuhn within his sight. Sanborn has fallen out of the top five. Back to the front, St. Clair opens up the inside under Hopkins. He was in there through one and two, but Hopkins is about clearing him once again. St. Clair putting up a fight. He's not out of this one just yet. Cookson and Hopkins might have bullied him out of there for the top two, but St. Clair still has some secrets in the bag. Max Cookson, lap 95. Hopkins continues to ride the high side despite being clear by multiple car lengths on St. Clair. He's still staying up there in the second group. Max Cookson turning uh, 15.1. 15.1 his best lap time so far. Hopkins able to click off a 15.2. St. Clair's best lap time is a uh, 15 flat. Josh St. Clair has turned the fastest lap time of the race with a 15 flat. Back there in fourth and fifth, Ryan Kuhn gets by Joey Pohl, followed by Ben Ashline. And so the top five on the track are the top five in the race with no lapped cars in between them. On to lap 99. Kelly Moore has issues in the 47 down the back stretch. He's going to go another lap down. And we are at lap 100. This time for Max Cookson. 50 laps to go. Ladies and gentlemen, the yellow comes out for Kelly Moore, unfortunately. On lap 100, Kelly Moore just about comes to a stop on the back stretch, but he continues to limp it around. He's got a flat right front tire on the 47. Cookson shakes off the challenge. Hopkins will settle it down into second. St. Clair third. 
The battle is there for fourth and fifth between Ryan Kuhn on the outside and Ben Ashline in the 99. Trevor Sanborn on the outside looking into the top five, as is the 18 of Kevin Douglas. Mike Hopkins starting to turn up the pressure now on the race leader within a car length. Everyone scrambling for position back behind them mid-pack. A lot of racing going on. Little breathing room back to the third place car of St. Clair. Does he have anything left to take on those two heavy hitters up front? Ashline and Kuhn have got it sorted out. Ashline now holding fourth. Ryan Kuhn back to fifth. And watching to see if Trevor Sanborn has anything to offer the former winner in the Richard Moody number 44. Belcito coming to life as well in the eight. Put the bumper to the back end of the 44. Belcito gets a fender underneath and pulls up alongside the 44. That's the battle side by side for sixth position. Angelo Belcito's got the preferred lane on the inside. And Hopkins now helping Max Cookson through turn two. Right tucked underneath that bumper and a fender underneath. He's wheel to wheel now. Mike Hopkins. Hopkins looking to become just the second driver to win this race along with the Coastal 200 in one season. Hopkins will lean on him out of turn four. Max Cookson says, no, this is my spot. Cookson strong into turn number three. Side by side out of turn four. Cookson has it by 34 one hundredths of a second. Great race up front for the lead. Cookson starting to come to life on the outside. If he's able to keep Hopkins down low, keep Hopkins pinched down against the rail, and he's able to complete the pass. Max Cookson back in charge. 40 laps to go. Josh St. Clair starting to come back into the picture while Hopkins and Cookson were battling it out for the lead. Josh St. Clair able to sneak into the picture and back within a car length or two. Cookson goes up wide, show the bottom of the track to Hopkins. Hopkins not able to capitalize on that one. Some great gamesmanship going on up front between a couple of veteran and Hopkins and one of the rising already established stars, young stars here in the Northeast and Max Cookson. Don't sleep on that battle back there for fourth and fifth either. The number 99 of Ben Ashline holding fourth. Ryan Kuhn right there with him. Belsito within striking distance as well. Ryan Kuhn gets the fender underneath into turn one. The 72 car trying to get that fourth spot away from Ben Ashline. One car that is all of a sudden fading quickly is that 44 of Trevor Sanborn. Sanborn was 
almost ready to crack the top five and now he's on the outside. He's lost a position to Austin Terrace and the 29 who's gone up to seventh. Dan McCaig Jr. all ready to grab that spot away from Sanborn. Thirty laps to go. We'll make it twenty nine this time by the line. Cookson's got some breathing room now. Couple car lengths up on the fifteen of Mike Hopkins. Josh St. Clair starting to fade back from that pair. St. Clair all alone in the third position. Ryan Kuhn running fourth. Ben Ashline fifth. Angelo Belsito runs sixth. Austin Terrace in the 29, running in seventh. Then comes Dan McKay Jr. in eighth. Trevor Sanborn has faded back to ninth. And Garrett Hall in the 94 car runs in tenth. This time by, 25 laps to go for Cookson and Hopkins. Josh St. Clair, Kuhn and Ashline. Max Cookson has been a dominant driver on the Pro All-Star Series scene. He's been a dominant driver at his home track of Oxford Plains Speedway, but he has quickly taken to his cast at Speedway showing that his talents range over a wide array of racetracks. As he fights to nail down his first career win here at Wiscasset Speedway. Trevor Sanborn continues to fade back. He's outside the top 10 now. Again, Sanborn led the a couple of the first laps of this race was right around the top five for much of the day. He has faded back to 11th now in danger of losing that spot to the 41 of Logan Melcher. The Belcito was able to get by the 99 of Ben Ashline. Ashline gives it back to him coming on to the front stretch. But now Belcito able to drive away in car number eight. Put him into the top five for the first time today. Twenty laps to go. Cookson will make it 19 to go this time by the line. There are 15 cars left on the lead lap. Last car in the lead lap is that 0-1 of Jet Decker, but he's still a full straightaway ahead of Max Cookson with four cars between them. Max Cookson will power by the 44. Rusty Poland who gets up out of the way. Poland mired back in 19th position. And now Max has got a half a straightaway to catch the number 84. Uh, Jamie Wright, the next one in the crosshairs. But again, the last car in the lead lap is that 0-1 of Jet Decker. Inside the final 15. The pay window is about to open. He holds a lead of eight tenths of a second. Uh, 1.1 seconds over Josh St. Clair. Ryan Kuhn all alone in the fourth position. Belsito a, distance eight, a distant eighth position. I mean uh, fifth position in car number eight. <laughs> it's been a long day, folks. <laughs> uh, 
139 laps complete. This time by the stripe, 10 laps to go for Max Cookson. Now he's got a couple cars between him and the second place car of Mike Hopkins. What a great battle he and Hopkins had on that last exchange just around lap 100. But Cookson has been in charge ever since and he has stretched his lead out now to a full second over Mike Hopkins. is continuing to build up to 1.2 seconds. And Cookson continuing to patiently work through the lap traffic, including putting the 44 of Trevor Sanborn a lap down. Sanborn was in contention early to lead this race, but the Richard Moody machine has faded late in this race and finally goes a lap down as we are inside the final five. Next one to go a lap down, or actually Jeremy Davis. Davis the last car in the lead lap. Now goes a lap down, that leaves 14 cars. Or 13 cars that is. The next one, Jet Decker in the 0-1. This time by, Popsicle sticks her up. Two laps to go for Max Cookson. Josh St. Clair has lost the third spot to Ryan Kuhn. St. Clair is in danger of not finishing on the podium. There is one lap to go this time by. Final time down through turn three and four. The pay window is open. Max Cookson wins the Boss Hog 150. Mike Hopkins finishes in second. Ryan Kuhn sneaks in to grab third. Took it away from Josh St. Clair with four laps to go. St. Clair settles for fourth. Angelo Belsito finishes in fifth. I knew this was coming. He's not allowed to do it at his home track, but he is allowed to do it here, folks. He is the leading points man in the Kowicki Driver Development Program. And you know we're going to let this guy do a Polish victory lap after he burns it down on the front stretch. We will definitely let the points leader of the Kowicki Development Program do a Polish victory lap here at Wiscasset Speedway. In just his second race here at this track, last year was his first, and uh, he showed his talents can be taken to any kind of track. A salute to his fans and crew over there on turn two on the backstretch. Main State Driver of the Year last year. This guy is the past point leader. He is the Oxford Weekly point leader. Now we get to get him back over there to get to victory lane. Ladies and gentlemen, give him a round of applause as he rolls into Coastal Auto Parts victory lane. Max Cookson. <laughs> Let's send things down trackside with Nick Huff and a large piece of hardware going to the 39. What a burnout that was too. Holding it all the way down the front stretch. Nice show by Max Cookson. And a uh, little side note, both these top two were sporting the JM Builders colors. Good friends with John McCarron, both Max Cookson and Mike Hopkins. So I'm sure Johnny's Happy to see him in the top two. 
And that first place trophy is uh, definitely going to be pushing the limits at maxing, uh, maxing Max Cookson's height. Yeah, thank you to Steve Perry, by the way. Mainly awards for giving us this great hardware once again. All right, folks, he is just about ready. Taking his time, getting a nice swig of ice cold water, and let him hear it, folks, Max Cookson. Wow. Max, in only your second attempt at the Boss Hog 150. Good strategy there. Seemed like you really turned it up in the second half. Yeah, you know, we had a game plan uh, going into it, and, uh, you know, took the lead there on that restart, and then uh, old Hoppy got up there, and uh, hats off to him, racing me clean as ever. But, uh, you know, that was just a, uh, that's how it should be done. You know, rub a little vinyl on the things, you know, that's how racing should be done. But, uh, just can't thank everyone on this thing. Uh, JM Builders, Larish Observation, Signature Excavation, BR Norris Construction. I got Kelly Smith Printing, uh, Steve's Property Maintenance, Troy Moist Truck and Night Archery. Uh, I can't say enough about the uh, Quickie Drive Development Program this year and what they've done for me as a person and on the racetrack. Uh, Ernest Performance, Rex Garrett, Spencer Robbins, Bill's a Badass Motor. Um, the whole staff was cast. This place is awesome. And uh, I just got to thank all my guys so much that I couldn't do it without them. Max, there was a moment there where Hopkins got you up off the bottom. He pulled it up wheel to wheel, and I think a lot of people thought that's when Hopkins was going to take command. But, man, you fought back hard on the top side. Yeah, all night I felt like the car really just took off after 10 laps. So he got us there once, and uh, there was a hole behind him, but uh, we just let her dig up top and was able to fend him off and then drive away there at the end. Max Cookson, awesome run. Hey, any last words, anything else you want to say? Just got to thank all my guys, Kevin, Nick, Bo, Devin, Johnny, uh, Danielle, the girls, Marcy, Claire. Uh, Joan and uh, Greg Curtis, Mike Steves, Lee, uh, my beautiful girlfriend, Sarah, I love you. And uh, just everyone who uh, comes over and helps out on this thing, can't do without them. All right, let it soak in, Max. $10,000 richer, congratulations. Oh, man, and uh, yeah, Mike Hopkins, six years on the podium now in the Boss Hog 150. He is certainly the Boss Hog King. Fall short one position uh, today, and uh, just like I said to Max, you got him off the bottom, ran wheel to wheel there in uh, with about 30 to 40 to go. Did you think that's when you were going to snag the lead? No, nah, I knew it was going to be a battle. We uh, we've given three or four away this year. We just got too tight. Um, congrats to Max. He, he that was a hell of a race between me and him and Josh. And if I'm going to lose one, I want to lose to him. That was that was uh, that was cool. Um, you know, Kevin helps him, helps me, John. It's a it's a big group here, so it's you know obviously. Second socks, right? But, you, you know, it's still a solid day. It's better than a lot of other cars. And to finish on the podium here six years in a row, this place is so great. The fans, um, I tried, you know, I, I tried to move them out and hope if I could clear them, I could maintain. I just was way too, way too tight in, and it made me free off. So, again, congrats to him. And we just uh, can't thank all these fans for coming out and uh, letting us put on a good show. Yeah, you certainly did put on a good show. Max, you know, uh, thanked you and congratulated you. You raced him clean. You could have roughed him up, but you guys just uh, put on a good side-by-side -side battle. Yeah, I mean, uh, I, mean I, I don't want to say, you know, it was easy to be a Monday morning quarterback, but probably anybody else, I would have uh, used a lot more racetrack than I did. But, you know, I want to I win straight up, and we wasn't good enough to win, and we, we got to keep working. That's it. We just got to be better. All right, Mike Hopkins, any more sponsors you want to thank on the 15th? Uh, I just got to thank Liberty Tanks, uh, Poor City Race Cars, Sticket Graphics, There's Racing Engines, um, just everybody that makes this possible. And... You know, JM Builders, John's helped me a lot. He helps Max. So uh, thanks to them and everybody that comes, their families, to, to put up with this heat and, you know, work through this. And, again, I can't thank all these fans. Appreciate you. All right. Two wins for Mike Hopkins. Today is going to be his third, second place run in the Boss Hog 150. And then this guy, Ryan Kuhn, with two to go, you got by Josh St. Clair. Yeah, that, we had a really good long run car. I needed the... I needed the 150 to go green to check it to have a shot, but um, you know that thing that thing was bad fast at the end, and uh, I think I think we had something for the leaders, but uh, I knew if we had a caution, I probably would have faded a little bit because uh, we just didn't really have the short run car we needed. But thing raced really good, and I'm so proud of my guys. They do they do so much work to you know help this race team to to be where we are today is uh, pretty incredible. And man, I'm just I'm so thankful to finish third. <laughs> it looked like it was grueling. You had to be very patient. It was slow coming for you to just get into fourth and then within third place contention. 
Yeah, I tried to save my tires the best I could early on in the race, and uh, it, it really worked out, especially in the late runs, trying to just manage it and try to manage the temperatures and all that stuff. But the thing was really, really good on the end, at the end, and uh, man, I wish, I wish I was right there. It's, uh, I, I knew we had a car that could have won on the long run, but you know, we got a third, and I'm, I'm really happy. This is a win for us. It's been a rough couple months. All right, <laughs> Ryan Kuhn, any sponsors you want to thank on the 72 ride? Yeah, first, I'd like to thank Everett's Auto Parts um, for giving me the opportunity to drive this car. Uh, Bernier's Liquors, Modern Auto Body, Coastal Heritage Bank, our cam set of shop, uh, Zero One Designs. Uh, everyone here at Wiscasset, it's a great turnout. Unbelievable crowd, unbelievable racetrack. I haven't been here in seven years, and improvements is unbelievable. This place is absolutely beautiful. This is it's so cool. <laughs> Ryan Kuhn sneaks one in there in victory lane with only two laps to go. What a weekend. Boss Hog 150 comes to a close one more time. Big photos from Max Cookson. Let him hear it, folks. Mike Hopkins with runner-up honors this year. Ryan Kuhn filling out victory lane. And it's been a long weekend, a long yesterday, a long today. It is certainly bittersweet that Boss Hog Weekend 2023 comes to a close. I'm gonna sign off. And Ken, why don't you take us home with some kind words? All right, thank you very much, Nick Huff, for all your hard work. And the entire team was Casa Crew. Thank you guys very much for all your hard work this weekend. You fans for packing the house as always. Whether it's your first time or your 100th time, we want you back next time. So uh, please come join us. Bring somebody to the track that hasn't been to a race for a while or maybe never at all. Make a new fan. Bring him here to Wiscasset Speedway. And uh, let's continue to have a good time racing here in Mid-Coast Maine. we got another month of racing to go, so check the website, wiscassetspeedway.com, for all the details on the official results from this race this weekend and uh, all, everything that's coming up here in the uh, close of the 2023 season. On behalf of today's race sponsor, Bath Ironworks, General Dynamics, and our, all of our associate sponsors and lap sponsors of today's race, thank you guys very much. And, of course... On behalf of Richard and Vanessa Jordan and the entire staff, we'd like to thank you. Have a great rest of your Labor Day weekend. We will see you next time. Good night.